Okay, welcome back. Last time we made our way up this building in Pyrite Town and caught three more Shadow Pokemon. We caught Mantine, Quillfish, and a Remoraid that we added to the team in place of Slugma. And it's also the only Shadow Pokemon we currently have on our team that isn't ready to undo the final lock to its heart. And also, all my other Pokemon are now level 30. Uh, obviously, these three... Sorry, these four... So, no, but these three, these three, I was right the first time, will go up past level 30 when I purify them. But we can't do that right now. So today we're going to be entering the Pyrite Cave, and this will probably take an episode or two for me to get through and beat every e trainer and get every item and everything. Oh, also in between episodes, I went back and bought a lot more Pokeballs. Maybe I should have just bought more. Maybe I should have just invested all of that money from regular Pokeballs and Great Balls. But hey, who knows? We'll figure that one out as we go. So we pop open that treasure chest and get two Hyper Potions. And there is another one over here that contains three Ethers. Also, I should note, uh, there's a lot of trainers in here that are skippable, but I will be fighting all of them. So we could have just walked right past this girl and not fought her. But hey, I want the XP. Yeah, you're finally here. This floor's my territory. I can't let you through. Considering the fact that we could have just walked right past her and down those stairs without doing anything else. Yeah, for some reason I don't think she, uh, I don't think that statement is very accurate. She definitely could just let us through. Okay, so we lead with Remoraid and Bailey. And I'm immediately going to switch Remoraid out because honestly it's probably just going to die to anything in one hit because it is 10 levels below everything else. I don't know if that was intentional. Like, I think I mentioned this in the previous episode. It's been a couple of days since I last recorded an episode. But I feel like that Remoraid was supposed to be a higher level than it is. But instead, it's just 10 levels below everything else. Like, I don't know if they planned for Octillery to just be super busted good in this game and they wanted to kind of handicap it a little bit. But I don't know, it's a little bit strange. Okay, so this is where we... So for this fight, we are going to be dealing with an Anorith and a Lotad. Anorith is a bit of an inconvenient typing for me to currently deal with. Fortunately for me, I have Shadow Pokemon and, you know, Shadow moves are neutral to every type in the game. However, I think this actually gets flipped in Col- not in Colosseum, in the XD, Gale of Darkness. Because I believe in that game, it's super effective on everything. Which is kind of ridiculous. But hey, honestly, that Okay, I say that, but honestly, Shadow Rush being super effective on our... The Shadow Rush being super effective on everything is honestly not even... It, that is far from the most busted thing that you'll see in, in Colosseum's sequel. Which I will probably do on here at some point. I don't have a real schedule as to when, but I'll probably do it at some point. Also, with Bayleaf in Hyper Mode, I might as well just keep it in Hyper Mode for the foreseeable future. Because realistically, there's no reason for me to take it out of it, because the meter is already down. With the meter already just at minimum, there's no reason for me to realistically take it out of Hyper Mode. Unless I really need to heal it with items, but it has Synthesis, so I'd still be able to just work with it that way. And I do know that between now and the boss at the end of this dungeon, we are calling this a dungeon, but still, uh, between now and then, I know that there is a save point in the healing uh, machine. So I feel like I should be okay. Oopsie, I lost. I will say though, I do love that character design for the street performers. I think it's really cool. I really like it a lot. You're a surprise, but I'm not telling you, but I'm not telling you where Mirror B's waiting. Okay, I mean, I imagine he'll be waiting right at the end. Also, this is another guy. Guess what we can do? Just walk right on past him. I'm not going to because I do want to get as much EXP as I possibly can onto my Pokemon. But yeah, if we needed to, we could have just walked right past this guy without ever having to fight him. What's going on here? I heard there was one intruder, but there's obviously two of you. Honestly, Chaser Mize? It honestly might be the smartest person in this game so far. So we have Coughing and Ralphs. Okay, so this seems like a pretty cut and dry case of we use Bite on the Ralphs and switch into Espeon, then just Confusion the Coughing. And from there, I think we should be okay. 
and I don't need to worry about the Ralts resisting bite or anything because I know for a fact that Fairy type does not exist in this gen and wouldn't exist for like another nine years as after this game coming out, so. Yeah, I don't think I need to worry about that too much. I'm sure that there are like ROMs and mod hacks and not mods and ROM hacks and fan games and stuff like that that introduce things like the physical special split and more moves and new and fairy type and everything. I'm sure that they probably exist, but at the same time, I, you know, I'm I'm playing this as if I was playing this on just actual hardware. Like, I am playing this on an emulator, but I do, like, own the physical game that's on my shelf in the next room over, actually. Because I basically just moved most of my games... Like, I, for some reason, moved most of my games into, like, a different room, and realistically, I probably shouldn't have. But hey, that's something for me to deal with at a later time. Anyway, Umbreon and Aspiron gonna finish off this Shroomish next turn. You know, hopefully we don't get hit with, with like, Stun Spawn, then Effect Spawn, but hey, we should be good to go. Uh, with confusion and honestly if that doesn't finish it off bite will okay yeah bite definitely finishes it off now i just need to hope i don't get hit with the effect spore because even though it is a uh, special attack in this game it will still potentially cause effect spore to go off because it does make physical contact but hey with that chaser mize is defeated also espion hit level 31 which is pretty good and yeah my pokemon are apparently too strong which is a, which honestly is technically accurate, but at the same time, his Pokemon weren't exactly super impressive. Raising your, post, we're, be, raising your Pokemon to those levels must have been a hard struggle. You might be our enemy, but you have my respect. I mean, you know what? Thanks, Chase Mize. Like, thanks, I guess. Okay, I'll just keep on running on through here and see what we have going on in here. Okay, so we have a staircase up and another person over here. Let's put Maku here at the front. Why do I... I okay, I'm going to do that and this guy's suddenly going to have psychic types of someone. Hold it! Don't think you're going anywhere when he catch my eye. Okay. Okay, right at one. I guess, we're, I guess we'll have a battle and I'll just walk right on through. Meditate and bag on. So you may notice that... Oh. I was going to say, you may notice that one of his Pokemon is higher level, and that's the Shadow Pokemon. But no, no. Um, the Meditite is the Shadow Pokemon, though. I would have... I, uh, okay. I would simultaneously love to be able to catch a Bagon in this game and have a potential Salamance. But at the same time, I know... Uh, I know that r the game kind of roughly ends... The game it ends with you roughly around about level 50. Like, early level 50s, I think. So, ultimately, you would have Salamence for, like, two battles right at the end. I mean, I say that, but I guess, spoiler, I guess a spoiler for this game's sequel, you do catch a Salamence in that, and it's in, like, the second last fight in the game. Obviously, you can, you know, keep playing. There's a little bit of a post-game, but realistically, yeah, you can catch that right at the end of the game in the sequel. And Cross Chop does a little over half of that bag on, okay. So what I'm going to do is Confusion, and then I'm just going to throw a Pokeball at this Meditite, because Meditite typically isn't that tough to catch. I say that, but honestly, I know my luck. This is probably going to be a giant pain. Honestly, Meditite might be pretty okay in this game, because it has somewhat... Because it has somewhat respectable physical and special attack stats, and on top of that, not only does it have good... Uh, well, decent, decent speed, okay defenses, I think. I don't remember how good it is defensively, but it has pretty okay uh, physical and special attack, but what really makes it useful is the fact that its ability is pure power, and pure power is basically just huge power. So pretty much it, like, it's uh, physical attacks that'll be shown as one thing, but it's basically doubled, so you effectively go into every fight with a plus two. And, unfortunately, that does lead to a couple of inconveniences, because while it does gain access to the elemental punches, although I think you need the move relearner and heart scales for that in this game, well, in, you know, the mainline games, and I don't think it's accessible at all in this one, cross jobs just one shot for a normal. Uh, Thunder Punch, Fire Punch, and Ice Punch, while you have access to all of them, they are still special attacks in this gen. 
so you wouldn't really get any benefit from huge, well, pure power out of them. But hey, we now have the Meditite. It's in the PC. It's probably gonna, just going to stay there. But hey, we now have the Meditite. My Pokemon have won a knockout challenge. You're an average trainer for beating them. I mean, it, it still wasn't particularly impressive. Okay, so if we go down here, there's running water and everything. So, this is the right way. This is where we need to be going. Basically, uh, in general, the way I look at this is if there is a shadow Pokemon for me to catch. Like, if there is a shadow Pokemon for me to catch, I'm probably going the right way. However, I want to go the other ways here, because, uh, you know, there's more stuff to do, more items to find, and more trainers to battle. Also... Uh, just like with the other ones, you just walk right past these Tyrannos. So there's one we can just walk right past. And this person, you can just walk right through them. They do not care. And they are guarding three Ultra Balls. Also, I remember this one Tyrannos more than anyone else in here. Uh, and I am going to put... I guess I'll put Flaffy in front of the team for this one. Okay, this guy... Too bad for you, you're at a dead end. Mirabee's not here. So, this is Bandana Guy Noxy. He has four Lotads. That's his entire team. He throws four Lotads at you. Like, they are of varying levels, but he just has four Lotads, and I think that's kind of funny. Also, I need to switch Remoraid out immediately again, because one, again, because again, it is significantly lower level, and also these Lotads will probably all have Absorb. So, I will just put Bayleaf out front, I think. I'll switch Bayleaf in, and then just go for Thunder Shark. I imagine this is probably going to take a little while, because... Actually, maybe I should just double in. Like, if I double up and just uh, kind of focus them down one at a time, that'll probably get it done a little bit faster. Because... Obviously, in this game, I can't use Discharge or anything, because Discharge does not exist yet. On the plus side, these Lotads are going to do very little damage. Although, Growl could be a minor inconvenience for me. But at the same time, I don't need to worry about it all that much, because realistically, it's still a Lotad. Its defenses are still comedically bad. I mean, I say that, this will still probably take a little while. But hey, you know what, we can get a little bit of chip in on both. Like, I can have Razor Leaf chip one down while Thunder Shock is doing the most damage, so uh... Yeah, this could take a little while. If it, if I feel like it's starting to take too long, I might just switch to Espeon. Because Espeon, obviously, being a real powerhouse on the Electric type. Not on the Electric type, but with its, con with its Stab Confusions. That's what I was looking for. I don't know where I got Stab Electric type from. Probably because Flaffy was on the screen. In, and, you know, at some point that Flaffy will get purified and it will become an Ampharos. And that Amph and when it becomes Ampharos, it'll probably hit really hard. I'm pretty sure Ampharos is also available. I think Ampharos is also available in this game's sequel. And I'm pretty sure it's pretty good in that one as well. Also, we may be at minus one, but we do have Hyper Mode, so crits are, you know, more likely to be coming on through. Also, I just dropped a thing on my desk. Don't worry about it. I don't just in case you're all wondering what that random sound was. Okay, so we are now down to this guy's final two loot ads. I will say though, I do love, I love and respect the hustle of pulling up with four loot ads. Okay, so loot ad uses sweet scent. We lure, we take a little bit of an evasiveness drop, but realistically that is absolutely, well, realistically that is an absolute non-issue. And now. Uh, I guess I just Shadow Rush for one that has a bit more health. And hopefully we get another crit. 10 out of 10. I don't know if it's a guaranteed crit, but it seems like a massive percentage increase. Because I feel like we just keep critting with Shadow Rush right now. Which honestly is super helpful for me. And obviously they are just going to keep gaining EXP. And I just realized I didn't switch Remorator in for the other ones. Bullet Seed will do a little bit of damage actually that is. Never mind, that's going to do a maximum of five damage unless it crits, and even then it's not going to be impressive. Okay, so this is low now, so I can just Shadow Rush with Bayleaf to finish it off and switch to Remoraid so it pools a little bit more EXP. Because I do want to get as much EXP as I can onto Remoraid before I purify it. 
because I do want a water type that is, you know, usable for an upcoming bit. I say an upcoming bit, it'll probably be in like three or four episodes time, but hey, you know, I do want to have a good water type available for most of the time, most of the game. And, well, I wouldn't say we savaged his team, but hey, we did win. Yeah, you sure are strong. We are no match for Mirror B. I mean, I, uh, who are you to judge me on that uh, bandana guy, Noxie? Okay, let's put... Let's put Maku here out front instead of Flaffy here. Because I remember that... Because I... Okay, so... Whoops, Roblox, this is a no through street. I literally walked from behind you. So this is Chesa Rehan, Rehan, I don't know how to pronounce it. She has a Geodude and a Lothad. And this is, once again, going to not be a problem in the slightest for me. You know what, maybe Ramorad might even get to do something here. No, because it still doesn't have a move available. Okay, let's switch to... You know what? Actually, no, let's switch to Umbreon. Let's go Let's go to Umbreon and then cross shop onto the Geodude. And she has four Pokemon. Okay, I don't remember what the other two are. I will say, one thing I do kind of appreciate in this game is a lot of the time when someone has a Shadow Pokemon, they often lead with it. Bosses will end with it, but a lot of the regular trainers lead with their Shadow Pokemon. I kind of appreciate that. One thing I also greatly appreciate from in this game that is uh, unfortunately not something that carries through in the sequel is this game, in this game, uh, watch them call them trainers, will only have one shadow Pokemon. They will have a maximum of one shadow Pokemon, but like by the end of XD, Gale of Darkness, you're fighting like two, three at a time sometimes, and that can be an absolute nightmare of an issue of pain. I don't even know what combination of words that just was. Okay, Makuhita goes into hyper mode. That's pretty handy for me, actually. Because now I have the chance to potentially crit this Lothad. And I imagine they won't double in on Umbreon. So I feel a little safer switching back to Remoraid. And now I can sh Actually, no. I can cross chop the Snow Runt. The Snow Runt is weak to fighting because it's Ice type. I mean, realistically, it's Ice type. It's kind of a non-issue here. It's kind of a non-issue here in general. Icy Wind is going to be a little bit of an inconvenience because it'll lower both of my Pokemon's speed stats by one. But realistically, Remoraid is probably getting switched out immediately anyway. And Makuhita barely lives that, which isn't great for me. Hopefully it's... I hope that went for Remoraid. It went for Makuhita. Okay, okay, that's... A minor inconvenience, but we can still work with it. I'll just go to Espeon. I'll go to Espeon and blast these these Pokemon into next week with confusion. I do know that Espeon gets... I think it's Psybeam? I'm pretty sure I get Psybeam at like level 36. But then I don't think we get Psychic until we either find a TM for it, or I want to say it's like level 50 or 60 something. Or maybe they shuffled it around for Colosseum. I don't really remember. Uh, they nearly killed Ramorad. That's not great for me. Hopefully, hit yourself, Lothad. Thank you. Thanks for the thanks for the assist on that, Lothad. And Ramorad flinches. Of course. Okay, I'm gonna switch. No, I shouldn't. I should. Yeah, I'll switch Ramorad out. Worst case scenario is I'll just switch it back in anyway. Okay, so let's confusion on the snow run. And this way, I can just kind of focus. Like, either the Snow Warrant goes down in one hit, or I can kind of just double in and take both out next turn. So I think I'm in an okay situation right now. Honestly, that Snow Warrant took that hit surprisingly well. Okay, block means until... Okay, fine, Espeon was not going to be leaving the field. Hit yourself? Nope, okay, it went for, it went for Growl. That's ultimately going to do nothing for them, so that's okay by me. Okay, so, now we just, uh, bite the Lothad, Confusion the Snow Runt, and we can be on our way to see what her final Pokemon is. I, I say what her final Pokemon is. If I really needed to, I do have the guide for this game. It 
Like, it is in horrible condition, because I've had it since I was, like, eight years old, and that is a slack off, okay? Yeah, I do still actually own the guide for this game. Like, I own a physical guide for this game. But, honestly, I'm not going to be looking at it for this playthrough. I could if I need to, but I... You know, but I'm probably not going to, unless things start going absolutely... Like, unless things become dire, I don't think I'm going to be doing that. Similarly, I'm also not going to be using that uh, infinite Pokeball glitch, because I do feel like that is genuinely cheating. Even though, admittedly, it is kind of very helpful. As much as it is extremely helpful, please to Okay, I was gonna say, please tell me you went for uh, Espeon, but that is just as good for me. So now we just return and finish off the slack off. Realistically, it didn't make any difference. Realistically, that didn't make any difference because it was going to have a truant turn, so it wouldn't have moved regardless. And with that, we can now move on through this cave. And I'm actually starting to realize that maybe that damage I've been taking has been, is starting to stack up a little bit. I, mean, I say that Umbra and Nasty are still near full health. Mirror B's unbeatable. You'll lose. I mean, I know what his team is from memory. And... I feel like I'm okay. I remember what his team is. I don't think I need to worry too much here. Okay, is there anything else here before I go? No, there is not. Okay, so let's head on down these stairs. Let's back up through this area and then down some stairs. And then we should be good to go. So, I think that's including Mirabi himself. Okay, I'm going to come back for that guy, because I think the healing place is, like, right across this little bridge. I think. Okay, no, she has... She definitely has one. I'm dead certain that she has one of the shadow Pokemon. I'm fairly certain that she has one of them. I think she has... Well, you know what? Let's just go and... Let's go investigate. Welcome to here. Okay, so this is Rider Sosh. Is she the trainer? I think she is. She is not. She is the one who has the Dunsparce. I thought she was the one with something else. Uh, so, I guess I... I guess, very minor spoiler. Uh, I thought she was the trainer who has the Swablu, not the Dunsparce. Honestly, Dunsparce might be pretty solid in this game. So let's switch out to Umbreon, because Umbreon can take hits the best, and then fund our way for this Dunsparce. And then we should be good to go. Because realistically, I don't want to leave a 13 health Remoraid in against a Mareep regardless. And honestly, Dunsparce could... Dunsparce could do some damage, because it does have, you know, stab normal moves. And realistically, that could lead to a hitting pretty hard. Glare is Paralysis. Honestly, if I'd known it was going to just do that, if I'd known it was going to do that, I would have just left it and synchronized what it worked for me. Okay, everything that isn't uh, Flaffy has paralysis now. Okay, let's double in. I'm going to double in on the Dunsparce, because I won't knock it out, because its special defense is pretty solid. Like, defensively, Dunsparce is pretty okay. So I'm going to try to whittle this thing down a little bit, because I know it can be a bit of a pain to catch. I know it's one of the tougher Pokemon from Gen 2 to catch, I think. You know, excluding things like legendaries and stuff. Although, realistically, uh, realistically, you saw how much that Quillfish just did not want to stay in the ball last episode. So, uh, who knows? Dunsparce might put up a bit of a fight, or it might just work with me. I really hope it just works with me. But I know my luck. It won't. It never does. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I will have Umbreon. I'll have Umbreon's secret power for Mareep, and I'll try throwing a regular ball just at the Flaffy. No, not at the Flaffy, at the Dunsparce. Okay, so I bought 40 regular Pokeballs, so I think I should be okay for most of For at least this area, at least. One. Two. Three. Down time, we call the Dunsparce in one ball. Very nice. And her last Pokemon is a Cacnea. I will say, I do love Cacnea. It's just. Cacnea is such a goofy little guy of a Pokemon. That secret power actually did a fair bit more than I expected it to. Because honestly, if you asked me, like, hey, what's going to be a physical, 
you know, hey, what's going to be a physical damage dealing Pokemon on your team? Umbreon is not it. I mean, realistically, but I have actually, in the past, I have used Umbreon just as a thing. Like, I remember I played Black and White 2 once, and I used Dig Umbreon, and it was actually really good against LSS team. But hey, that, that nearly did half. That's actually pretty okay. So, just for comparison's sake, let's go for Bite and then Confusion. Confusion should probably finish off the Cacnea. No, this wouldn't work at all if that Cacnea was a few levels higher. I'm pretty sure it evolves at the Cacturn, either 37. I want to say it's 37. And Cacturn is part Dark type, so Confusion wouldn't have worked at all. Okay, you know what, that Flaffy took about the same amount of damage from both hits, but that's fine regardless, because it won't knock us out with one. Okay, that did very little, even if that critter wouldn't have done anything, really. So now we just finish off this Flaffy, and I believe the healing machine is just right there after we finish this fight. But I think we finished crossing this bridge, and I'm pretty sure it's right there. But who knows, we will find that out in about 20 seconds time. But with that, Ryder Sosh is defeated. You know she's serious because she refers to herself in third person. Okay, so let's keep moving on. No way, no way, I'm supposed to be someone as strong as you, they must be joking. Okay, so this is a long little bit of bridge. But perfect, it is right here. Fantastic. Now, I'm relatively certain that I have to go up here. So I'm just going to quickly have a... Okay, yeah, that's just a dead end. Like, that is straight up a dead end, but we can see two treasure chests there. So they will be waiting for us in the near future. However, we do want to go back because there was one more trainer over here that we hadn't fought. And I would quite like to battle everyone just to get as much EXP as I can. Because honestly, realistically... Grinding is not particularly available much in this game. Well, it is, but it's tedious. It's super tedious. So I'm going to fight everyone in every area while I'm going through. And I might as well put Flaffy in front. I don't know what this guy's going to have, so hopefully I made the right call here. If I drop you here, Mirabees should give me a reward. So Hunter Valen. Valen? Valen? I don't know how to pronounce it. Valen? Yeah, I'll stick with Valen. Okay, he has a Lotad and a Wisma. Okay, yeah, maybe I should have left uh, Makuhita in there, but whatever, it'll be okay. Because, okay, Remoraid should have learned a move now, but what move was it? We got... Lock On. Interesting. Interesting. I don't think that really makes much sense, because, uh, what, is the, stra is the strategy supposed to be to use, like, is, that actually did a lot of damage. Like, is the strategy there supposed to be, like, wait until it evolves and use, like, lock on Octazuke or something? But, like, I don't really see much point to doing that. that okay, raw hits and switches. Okay, it switches Remoraid out for Espeon, okay. Unfortunate, unfortunately for uh, Hunter Valen, he just brought out my strongest Pokemon. Like, he brought out the Ace unintentionally. Well, there goes Wisma, and Lotad will get dropped by Flaffy. So what is this guy's last Pokemon? He has a Slack-Off. A lot of Slack-Offs and a lot of Lotads in here. Lotad, I at least understand, but hey, like Lotad, I understand. Slack off getting so much representation in here is a little bit strange. Because I think there's like one trainer in the game who has a Vigor off, and then I think you see, like if I recall correctly, I think the final boss has a Slack in. But I think that's the only time you see slacking in the game. Also, I'm switching out to Remoraid so I can get a bit more EXP because I would like to believe Slackoff can't one-shot it. And, okay, never mind. I was gonna... Okay, Covert does less damage because I don't have an item, but that was still a lot of damage, but fortunately for me, I don't need to worry about that too much. And you know what? 
I might as well have Remoraid finish it off because this, because just like all the other ones, this slack off is not moving this turn because Truant is not going to allow it to do so. You know what? That that works for me actually. That might be even better because now I can return and then call Remoraid to get its uh, what should we call it? The meter go down. The meter to go down a bit. Okay, so return, finishes off Slack Off with a completely unnecessary crit. And with that, uh, I am now just going to go run over at that healing machine, heal again, and uh, end off today's episode. And then next time, we'll probably finish off this cave, I think. I'll pretend that I never saw you two. Consider yourselves lucky. Also, that guy's plan was to stand in, like... A out of the way corner of that cave and I don't see I don't see the logic of his plan there. It's like, yeah, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna beat these intruders and then I'll get a huge reward. Like at least stand in the direct path if that's your plan, buddy. Okay, so with that we can now see what we caught today. We caught Meditite and Dunspass. I'm gonna quickly take this that's just for a second. Umbreon, get off the team just for a couple of seconds real quick. Because the Twisted Spoon... Uh... I think that's a visual bug. Okay, 10 out of 10. Okay, because now I want to give the Twisted Spoon to Espeon. Because that'll boost up its Psychic type attacks. So now Espeon will just do even more damage with its Stab Psychic moves. And that will probably be staying on Aspion for the remainder of the game. Thank you, Meditite. You are probably not going to be seen again in this playthrough, but hey, thanks, you did good. I also have Spell Tag on the Mischievous, but... And Poison Barb on the Quillfish, but again, not really going to be using any of those. Okay, so, I'm going to save and end off today's episode here. Next time we're going to be finishing... Probably finishing off this cave, because I think we're at least halfway through. Oh, and uh, yeah, that should bring an end to the Pyrite Town saga next time. So, as always, feel free to leave a comment and click any of the buttons down below if you feel so inclined, and I will hopefully see you all next time. Okay, thanks for watching. Later.